Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is David Creel. Uh, I work in the sales department with uh, Daystrom Technologies. Uh, <clears throat> joined today by a couple of guys from our, our technical team, Mike Cheney and Michael Carter, for this webinar. It's two o'clock. We're not completely full of people right now, so we're going to give it a just a couple of minutes to uh, to allow some other people to get joined here. Okay, it's a couple of minutes after two. I think we've got everybody in the meeting now that's going to attend. Uh, so, welcome again. Uh, this is the Thread Fraser webinar. Uh, should last about 30 minutes total uh, with uh, introductory comments and, and demonstration. Mike is going to be conducted by Michael Carter. Uh, <clears throat> Thread Tracer is a is a Gibbs Cam plugin that was developed by. A company uh, actually in Norway by the name of Hagen Industries. Hagen developed this uh, to kind of to fill in for some of the shortfalls that Gipscam has in the area of customized threading. So it is it is sold and, and developed by resellers nationwide. I mean it's developed by Hagen Industry, who's a, a Gipscam reseller and a, a certified uh, developer as well. So uh, this webinar is really not going to be very long. We're going to, I'm not going to say very much here. I'm just going to go ahead and introduce uh, Michael Carter on this and let him do, give us a, a demonstration of thread, of thread Tracer. So, Michael, I'm going to turn this over to you. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm going to uh, share my screen here. Okay. Can you see my screen, Dave? Yep. Cool. All right, so uh, hello and welcome to this demonstration of Thread Tracer for Gibbscam. Uh, Thread Tracer is a macro inside of Gibbscam that allows users to create custom threads easily and intuitively. Thread Tracer lets users create these threads using standard tools that most shops will have. So if you have a 35 degree insert, a 55 degree insert, or a grooving tool, you'll likely be able to create most types of threads. So while Thread Tracer focuses on thread types that are uncommon, it also has a freeform thread option inside of it that allows you to create any thread if you know its dimensional specifications. Um, but overall, if you create any Acme, Stub Acme, Ratchet, Buttress, Trapezoidal, or Knuckle threads, uh, this is really an invaluable tool. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to jump into my first example here. So I have um, a, a turned part. These are all going to be turned parts. Um, I have my uh, slice plane on here so we can see the inside of it. Um, and I also uh, called out some of these points so that we know what values to put into Thread Tracer. Um, as you can see, I don't have any tools, any processes, any operations. Um, 
obviously if I'm machining doing some threading here, I'm going to need to machine this first, drill out the inside, um, you know, and, and machine it down to our minor diameter. Um, so I'm assuming that you've already done all that um, before we start here. So uh, I'm going to go into macros and thread tracer and we get a license agreement every time and just just hit yes. Um, and it asked me if I want to resume the last state. I want to start with defaults because I'm showing you this from scratch. So I'm going to say no. OK, so uh, first thing we do, I'm just going to go tab by tab, kind of explain everything. First thing we do is we want to put in our nominal. Um, my XD here on both is actually 1.75, uh, but the type of thread I'm going to be doing is a, a nominal of two. Um, with a TPI of 4.5 here. Now you can also put in the pitch if you want by checking this box. Um, it's the same thing. They're they're either or, right? Tolerance. This is how many decimal places. So I'm going to go down to three decimal places for this. And then you want to say, uh, am I doing an internal or an external thread? So uh, this first one's going to be an internal. I'm I'm going to be doing some threading right here on the inside. And once you do that, you want to hit this recalculate button. What that's going to do is going to take all these values I just put in here and recalculate all this stuff uh, throughout this tab here. So we can see here um, uh, my nominal, my major diameter 2.04, my minor is 1.77, just about where my uh, XD value is here. You can see that. Now, if uh, this is not exactly what I wanted, I can actually check these boxes and put in my own values for the uh, major and minor, but I'm just going to stick with a, a standard thread for this example. Um, you can see that we have number of starts and you can make it a left hand thread if you want as well. I um, just want to point out those options. I'm not going to check them for this. Um, going on to the next tab, we have fillet chamfer. So you can actually customize, you know, what your fillets will be at the bottom of your threads and stuff like that. Again, I'm just going to leave everything as pretty standard for this example, uh, but just know that those options are in fact here. Jumping on to the tooling tab. Um, so these are all the different types of tools that I can use to create this type of thread. Um, I'm going to stick with a grooving insert. I think it makes the most sense because it's symmetrical. You can get both sides. Um, I could do, you know, a 35 degree insert and do half of the thread one way and half with another uh, another 35. Uh, but let's just do the grooving tool. So I'm going to uh, use a 16th here. 16th grooving tool. Now on insert radius, that's the corner radius of the tool. I want to make sure that this value is small enough to get in this fillet chamfer that I have on the previous tab, right? So we should be good. I just wanted to point that out as well. So once I filled that out, I always want to hit update for the tool type. And it's going to kind of recalculate everything that it wants to do. Um, moving on to the next tab here. So this first example, I'm just going to do some roughing just to show some internal roughing here. So I'm just going to be working with this roughing parameters box here. You can use standard roughing or adaptive roughing. Um, you have a lot of options for roughing style as well. I think that uh, most people would agree zigzag right left is the most common one here. Um, put in your step down, step over. Uh, any stock you want to leave for a roughing pass. You can shift your threads left or right using this box here. Um, and as well, if you're doing adaptive, um, you also have some options of, you know, how small of movements you're going to be making. Um, all right, and of course, the most important box here is thread start and thread end. So this ends at negative two. I'm going to have my thread go to rate one, um, excuse me, negative 1.9. And let's start at point one here. Um, cutting feet. Uh, cutting speed here. Um, I'm just going to leave that as is. Uh, we are able to do blunt starts, um, run in, run out, tapered thread, all that. The only one I'm going to do in this case is just a little bit of a run out and some run in here. All right, going on to our next tab. Uh, this is just a settings. Uh, you know, you can change your language or anything like that. Nothing really pertinent to what we're doing in the demo. On our control tab, again, this is more kind of uh, uh, setting type stuff. The only one thing I wanted to point out here uh, is it actually comes, Thread Tracer comes with some default uh, 
host processors. Um, these are just backups. So if for some reason your machine needs a specific call out in order to do a specific type of thread, um, you have some backup post processors here and you can just post out your threading operation using these um, and then kind of splice it into your uh, big code or you could just run it as a separate program after you've machined your part. So I think that's a really nice option. But anyway, so I've got all my uh, boxes filled out here. What I can do is uh, check do roughing here and then we have a do it button down here at the bottom. I assume everybody's familiar with Gibbs cam and the do it button. And it does this kind of uh, cool thing where it draws geometry. Oops. It draws geometry for what is going to create, right? Um, so you can see the, the start and stop of the thread. This first uh, first thread will show basically what I'm trying to rough down to. So I left, uh, I believe, 40 thousandths a stock on there. So that's what this uh, denotes. These are our entries. So that's my run in run out that I put in here earlier. And if you think everything looks good, uh, what you want to do is hit process ops in addition to do roughing. And it'll actually generate the operations now. So each of these is one of the passes that it's doing as it goes along. Um, and you can see it's it picked a good entry point here. Um, a good Z value. So now uh, let's check this out on our simulation. I'm going to turn off the section view. And I'm going to do three quarters mode here. So pretty cool, pretty easy. Again, this is just a roughing operation. It does look a little, little rough. I'm going to show you in our next example um, what a finished product looks like. OK, this is just some ID threads. So um, let's go on to a different part here. That's just uh, some basic Acme threading. OK, so this time we're going to do uh, some OD threading right here on the center. And again, I have um, uh, called out some of these points so that you can just look at um, these points here as we're setting it up. Again, no tools or anything uh, created yet. I want to start with defaults again because we're we're on a new part, right? OK. So it looks like our nominal is going to be six for this one. And uh, we're going to do a threads branch of two. This is an external thread this time. All right, fill in all our values. Uh, just to show that we can, I'm going to do um, uh, two starts this time. You see that now that we're doing external threads, all our tools are pointing down. That's a good indicator that we're we're doing the right thing. I want to make sure that my uh, insert radius uh, fits in my uh, fillet chamfer here. Always hit update. I'm going to update my step over, step down. So in this case, um, I want to go a little bit past uh, where the thread ends. So it ends at negative 22.12. I'm going to put negative 22.3. And for my start, I'll do negative 18.7. So we're starting a little bit before it as well there again i'm just doing the roughing so i'm only worried about this part of the box um, okay i think we're good on all this other stuff so i'm just going to say do roughing and let's check out what it generates here all right and um it looks pretty good to me. I th so I'm going to hit process ops here and hit do it. Now, one thing I didn't uh, talk about before is how it generates your tools um, and all that kind of because it's obviously making a tool, making a process um, and then making an operation and then throwing away all the other stuff. Um, I real quick, I want to open up our tool just so we can take a look at it. So this is just a grooving tool. All the tools that it creates, no matter what type of tool you're using, are going to show up in Gibbs Cam as form tools, 2D form tools. Um, 
So I can see it here. If I really wanted to, I could change this to a groove tool, uh, make it have the same dimensions, and it would still use that tool. Um, but that's just a little bit of extra work, and all of the threat, uh, all of the tool data is actually automatically put out in the comments here. So if you have a setup sheet or something, you'll still know what this tool is, even though it's a 2D form tool. Okay, so let's go ahead and simulate this one. Yeah, this is an Acme thread again. So I think it looks pretty good. Um, this is just a roughing pass. You can see we have some ridges here. So I want to show um, how I can create another finishing operation. I could have, when I was doing this originally, um, I want to say yes, because I want to retain a lot of the values that I already put in for my finishing operation. Um, I could have done a roughing and a finishing at the same time. If I checked both of these and hit do it, it would use that same tool for the roughing and the finishing. In this case, I want to demonstrate um, how to do a, use a different tool for the same thread to finish it. OK, so I'm going to jump back to my tooling. All my other tabs, these two previous tabs should be identical. They need to be the same, right? I'm going to use a 16th for our finisher. And I want to hit update. Okay. Now we want to go to the machining tab. So now that I'm just finishing, I can ignore this roughing parameters box. So you just put in your target surface roughness. Um, I'm not going to do anything too crazy. It's just a demo, uh, but I think 30 is a, a decent um, a demonstration here. So I'm going to hit do finishing and process operations. And there'll be a lot more passes here because we're trying to get a nicer finish. So these are all the passes it's going to do. Um, it starts on the right side here and then it moves to the left hand side and you'll see the same kind of thing in the simulation when it runs. But I like how it does this geometry thing. It gives you a good idea of, you know, the size of your tool, how it's going to fit in and all that kind of stuff. So let's check this out. So again, it starts on the right hand side of each individual thread. All right, and then it's going to do move on to the left hand side here. It's also doing um, the OD here because I did leave a little bit of stock. There's about two thousandths of stock here on the end of this, and it knows to go back and clean that up as well. It doesn't just um, do the inside of the threads. Right, getting there. Um, I believe on this in, uh, individual part, um, it's doing about 200 passes. So, and we did do two different starts. So you can see that it's doing one, 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 one. And uh, there is our finished threads. I think it looks pretty good. Get an idea of what the, the, the finish is going to look like here. Um, I could have added passes and made it a little bit smoother, but I think you guys get the idea. Um, cool, so let's move on to for my final example here. I want to move on to something a little bit less easy, a little bit less traditional. OK, so I'm going to do some OD ratchet threads or, or buttress threads. Um, people call them different things. Okay. 
uh, open my tools in cam. Again, I have no processes, uh, no operations, no tools, nothing like that. Um, Thread Tracer creates and does everything automatically. And then one thing I didn't mention before, it actually all throws away all the extraneous stuff. If you're familiar with 2D form tools, um, the process involves making geometry at the origin and making the tool. It does all that and then it throws all that away. So you don't have to worry about deleting things or anything like that. Uh, let's go into Thread Tracer here. And I want to say no to start from default. So since this is a different kind of thread, it's not an Acme screw thread, I'm going to go over to our control here and use this drop down list. So this is all the different types of threads that Thread Tracer is good for Acme, Stub Acme, Trapezoidal, Buttress, Round Knuckle. Um, some people call them rope threads. Um, and then full th free form. So just real quick, that full free form is um, you you uh, show the dimension or you put in the dimensions of your thread. So you could even make a UN or um, something like that using that. Uh, but for this, I'm going to do a buttress thread here. Once you switch, you want to hit the switch button. OK. And I'm going to go over to thread data. So each of those options actually has its own little interface. So you can see um, when I switched to buttress, it, it changed the interface here a little bit to match. So for my major diameter, I'm going to do 7.25. And I'm going to leave uh, threads per inch at four. These are external threads. Um, you can do buttress or, or put push buttress. I'm going to leave it on buttress and hit recalculate here. Uh, now, there's this is pretty simple. There's only two boxes that I filled out, but if I wanted to, I could go to custom here and I could edit these angles in here. So this is a seven degree angle to the left, um, but actually a lot of these have negative angles and stuff like that. So um, that's an option if, if you need to do that as well. OK. Uh, moving on again, fillet chamfer. I'm just going to leave this uh, exactly how it is. Um, this is the default tool for this. I think it makes sense because um, it, you're coming in and, and one tool should be able to get both sides of the thread. Um, in general, that's the goal with your tooling choice here. OK, um, in this case, I'm going to add a face relief and I am using the, the um, 35 degree tool over here. Um, but you know what, just just for demonstration purposes, I wanted to show you what happens when you select an incompatible tool. So this is a, I changed it to a 55 degree insert and that obviously won't fit into our buttress thread, right? Um, OK, I'm going to change my. Uh, step over, step down. I'm going to go, it, it goes to negative 2.75. I'm going to go a little bit past to negative three, uh, and I'll just start right here on, on zero. Uh, let's enable some run in, run out. Okay. And uh, let's hit do it and see what this looks like. So there's it, it draws our tool, which I think is nice, and it's drawing it, the tool in each position that it fails um, to kind of demonstrate why it's failing. And we already know why it's failing. I think this one is a little obvious, um, but it's a nice visual aid to see what you're doing wrong or what's not working. Um, and this is telling you, hey, you need a smaller tool. We can see that the, the tool is not fitting in in each of these positions uh, wherever it turns red. So that's cool. Um, and you might be wondering, well, I don't want all this. Um, you know, cluttering up my screen, there's, there's so much here. Um, it actually deletes and remakes it uh, when you change things. So I'm going to go over to my tooling and let's change this back to a 55 degree insert uh, with a half inch inscribed diameter. Make sure I hit update. Um, I'm going to zoom out just a tad here and hit do it. Oh, it didn't change the insert size. Hold on here. Oh, yeah, sorry. 
See, it's good that I had that there. I wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have known. All right, let's try that again. See, it deletes everything though, so you don't have to worry about it cluttering up the screen. All right. Now I do have to go back and uh, I'm going to delete this old operation that we don't want. And we also we can delete the other tool as well. OK, let's see what this looks like. All right, so there's our thread. I'm going to zoom out so we get the full picture, but it looks pretty good. Um, I would have had a lot of trouble creating this um, accurately in Gibbscam without this tool. So um, if you're ever doing any any of these kind of threads, really, um, this is the way to go, in my opinion. Um, but that's the end of my short demonstration. As you can see, Thread Tracer is pretty intuitive and user friendly. So as long as you know the parameters of the threads you're making, whatever you're making should be pretty straightforward. Um, I personally really like that it gives you user feedback when something goes wrong and you can easily fix the problem. Um, but again, I just want to stress that if your company is ever doing um, complicated or custom threads, Thread Tracer really will be your best friend. Um, I hope you all have enjoyed this demonstration and um, I'm relatively new to Thread Tracer myself, but if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. And if I don't know, I'll go and find an answer for you. All right, Michael, thanks very much. Good, good demonstration. Uh, <clears throat> so we have a small enough group where and it, if you want to ask questions, you can just go ahead and unmute your mic and, and do it verbally, or you can stick it inside the chat window and we'll we'll make sure that we get back to you that way. Uh, <clears throat> The Thread Tracer plugin is, and, and I was really shocked at this. That that plugin is a big time seven hundred and fifty dollars U.S. dollars. That's it, uh, and, and that includes support with it. So, uh, <clears throat> if anybody has any interest in that, make sure you just go ahead and drop uh, drop an email or give us a phone call. You've all got my contact information for sure, uh, and we'll we'll help you any way that we can. So. I'm going to wait for a couple of minutes here for questions, and if there are no questions, then we'll let everybody get on their way. So, the the other thing I need to mention is uh, something we didn't show in this in this demonstration. Uh, Hagen Industries also has a product called Mill Tracer uh, that is uh, that's a new version being released right now, and that's to do threading on a mill. Uh, and it is that program from what I understand right now, I don't have formal pricing on it, but I believe it's actually going to be an, uh, a free add in when you buy Thread Tracer. So. All right, so it looks like we have no questions at all today, which means that Michael Carter did a really good job. I appreciate that. So I'm going to wish everybody a good day. Thank you for attending and uh, have a good one. All right, thanks. Thanks, Dave.